Welcome to a live reaction of the Promise Neverland cast. Today we're doing a full live reaction to the episode where I freak out at shit I don't even know is going to happen. So, as I skip through this OP and get to the episode, let's get started. January 14th, 2046, by the way. I've been thinking about what to do Oh my fucking god, what the fuck? What is happening right now? Okay. So already, their fucking facial expressions are, right off the bat, completely different from what they've been in any point in this episode or in this series so far. It's going, like, to a completely new level of edgy and they're all both completely, in, you know, covered in shadow. Which is making me extremely suspicious of what's gonna happen. Okay, continuing. Oh snap. Are they going where they where I think they're going? This is gonna be like an Ocean's Eleven, it was in the backpack all along type, like triple reveal, let's see. But I see I knew it. I fucking knew it. Okay. Thank you for not showing us any of that show. Okay. Um, I'm a little bit trepidatious about this, but let's keep going anyway. Oh, snap. Uh, somehow she's ready to escape already, even though she's been planning this for all of two days. No explanation as to why they just have a backup plan that Norman wasn't privy to, or why they did this, didn't do this before Norman left. Nothing. No explanation so far. Okay, let's keep going. Super edgy music right now. Damn that music. So Ray is still selling the plan that he wants to save everyone, but I don't know if that's gonna keep up throughout this episode because he looks a little edgy right now. He just has a giant box. Is that like an Amazon Prime delivery? What the fuck is that? How come they didn't have this fucking box before? This episode, goddamn. What the fuck? Okay. I mean, the, the first thing that parents tell you when they leave you alone is don't fucking burn the house down and raise just like instructions unclear. Molotovs. I knew there were fucking Molotovs. How? How the fuck does he have Molotovs? At what point was he planning to burn something down? What do you mean six years of preparation? It doesn't matter if you have six years of preparation. Are, did you just prepare for every possible eventuality? Are we going to find out you have like a, a ballista that can launch people across a cliff in like five minutes? Is that what's going to happen? I don't know, Ray. I'm starting to get super suspicious of you right now. What is this face he's making? This is a straight up light Yagami face right here. This must be copy pasted from that one scene, you know, where he's on the highway. It's all according to plan, bro. Look at this face right here. What is this? What is happening? He says no one will die, but he's burning the house down. Are you going to tell them before you start the fire? Or are you just going to randomly start it? Or like, what about the little kids? They're going to have to outrun a fire while you're setting other fires out in the forest where they're running to. I don't know, Ray. This seems like a horrible plan. The truth comes out. He's still against taking everyone. We'll see what she reacts to this. Leave the babies behind in the burning house, bro. That's a good idea. At what point does he double cross her? Because we know it's happening. He's a sneaky, slimy fuck. He's gonna double cross her at some point. We just don't know when. We'll see. She's going to go full sister chrono and chase you through the forest as her fucking house burns down behind her. That's like the end of Skyfall shit right here. Let's go. 
What do you mean you realized? Your stupid plan has so many holes in it, and you fucking realize what's wrong with it. God damn it. God damn it, Ray, what are you gonna do? Shut the fuck up, Ray. No. No, he's not doing this fucking shit. I know what he's gonna do. No, 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 no. No. Stop, stop, don't play this edgy music. He's got a fucking Tibetan monk. No, no, no. What the fuck? Why? That is, that's the fucking edgiest face ever. God fucking damn it. This is a, such a stupid plan. It's like, oh, if you, oh, you will prove that I'm edgy, I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Well, you even you say it's childish. What the fuck? I just get perfect scores without even studying, bro. <laughs> this music is killing me right now. <laughs> what the fuck? You can't fuck up my life if I fuck up my life, Dad. Don't tell me what to do. Okay, so he's just fucking nuts. That's what it is. He's probably gonna set himself on fire anyway, no matter what happened, you know? He's just fucking crazy. Okay. <laughs> this fucking face, dude. I'm sorry, I know this is supposed to be like a climactic part of the episode, but this is so stupid that it's just funny. Wait, so he's gonna kill himself because he used other people to get to where he is right now? He's so guilty about that, he, that he's just gonna off himself. That's his plan. Is to just kill himself because he was so mean to other people. But didn't he already say that he was doing that to help them out? Isn't that the justification he gave himself? So really what we're learning is that he's way less edgy than we thought while he's being the most edgy that he's ever been. He's like, I'm going to kill myself because I used other people to help you try to escape. I was like, that's justified in itself. You don't have to have an extra like sacrificial victim. What if mom just leaves you and chases them? They're like, oh, he's fucking burning. There's no point. He's already roasted. We can't roast him if he's already roasted. And she just chases Emma and Don and Gilda and shit. Think through your shit for five seconds, Ray. <laughs> Polaroids are apparently super emotional in the future. He just has a match. The mom just gives them matches. Okay, this guy is... Fucking put Sasuke on, like, just, just said, Sasuke, get the fuck down. I'm going for number one. He has, like, eight gold medals spread out over his chest for being the edgelord of the year. Like, he's fucking killing himself at the stroke of midnight when he turns 12. 12 years old. Okay. This is just, just inspirational behavior right here. Of course she's fucking screaming. He's on fire. What the fuck? Oh, that's disgusting. That's fucking nasty. Oh, shit. How did the fire kill all that before it got to her, by the way? No, I'm not asking questions. There's gonna be a twist to this. There's a twist to this shit. I can sense the shit. They fucking faked the location with that. I can tell already. Or, you know, he's dead. There's that, too. And I'm just a heartless fuck. <laughs> That's so great. That's so amazing. This show is so fucked up. It's kind of crazy. It's like, uh oh, this 12-year-old kid is on fire. If I can at least get his brain back, it'll be okay. I just need his brain. Brains. Emma. Now she's fucking suspicious. Everyone's just leaving. Emma. She just fell on the floor. It was all for nothing. No, she fucking killed the tracker shit. 
Yep. She destroyed her tracker. Or cut it out. Oh, there's gonna be an ear in that bucket and I don't want to see it. Oh, no, 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 no. That's a fucking ear! Holy shit! God damn it, you have a taser for this? Why do you need to cut off your ear? You're not Vincent Van Gogh, fuck! God damn it, things have escalated so far. These kids just know what's happening? Who? When did they tell them? We never saw them getting informed of their escape plans. They all cut off their ear. Is that what you're saying? I fucking knew it! I knew there was some scammy shit! He's not just gonna self emulate you fucking piece of shit! God damn it, you had me at emotional for five seconds. Oh no. These kids showed up in one second, by the way. Wait a second. Wait a fucking second. This is like in those detective movies where they expressly tell you at the beginning that it's not this one person and at the end it's like, oh wait, it was that one person you, we expressly told you it wasn't, right? They have a two month time skip, which means we don't get to see at all what happens in those two months. And apparently she's put together like a whole separate 12 episode plan for getting out in those two months. Which is fine, but it really doesn't make the escape seem like worth it, all these episodes. I'm just saying. They're burning meat, and that's like a nasty smell. Dude, burnt meat doesn't smell nasty, it smells good! Burnt human, I don't know what burnt human smells like, but I'm assuming it's not... It's not tasty smelling. That was a, a good slap. That was a solid slap right there. I'm liking Emma more and more as the show goes. I mean, the show is clearly like pulling a Charlotte level, like, call another plot line at the end here, but still, she's just standing out as the standout character right now. She's doing really well carrying this by herself. <laughs> oh, the hair. The hair would work, yeah. I'm stupid, the hair works. No, fuck, no. No, 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 no. I, I can't accept this. This is stupid. This is fucking retarded. No way. No way is this happening. He's just gonna be like, I planned all this from the beginning. I knew that I had to leave so mom would think the rebellion has been quieted, but really I'm gonna guide you from the grave? Is this like some fucking letters? He has like a whole box of letters just planning out the entire scene. He's the fucking manga cut. He wrote the story and he's just writing letters to tell the characters what's gonna happen. Fuck this. Well, that's easier said than done. Fuck, they've been trying to outwit this mom since the whole fucking series started, bro. Let's just assume that none of them are dying from blood loss because they fucking cut off their ears. Okay, let's go. Wait, that means they left the babies, right? They had to leave the babies. They're not carrying babies with them right now. This is another one of those flashbacks that we just weren't privy to the whole time. So now we're being told post facto that something happened which is affecting things happening now. It would be nice to actually have the escape go as planned. And I know that's not a twist, but it, there will be more payoff, I feel, that way. But let's just watch what happens this way. See, this would have been something that we, that we could have been told, that the other kids listened in on the conversation. You know, like, this could be a whole other element to the show, which they're just bringing in at the end, you know? I don't like this kind of, like, at the end kind of ass pull shit. And I praised this show previously for not having ass pulls in it, but this is pretty ass pulley to me. Even though it seems like, oh, there was a master plan, if we don't at least see hints of the master plan, then it's just completely in darkness and pointless. I'm excited to see what the wall run scene is gonna be. Are they gonna fucking, like, Norman just run up the wall? At least we know how mom reacts when all her life's work burns down. Oh shit, she's going full demon mode, here we go. Oh fuck. Oh 
That's creepy as fuck. Is this it? Oh my god, it's the blue-eyed kid! No! What is he gonna do? He's the only one left. Why the fuck didn't they tell him? That's the end of the episode. Are you fucking kidding me? Okay. Okay, let's go over it from the top, shall we? Let's go over it from the top. Ray has... Okay, let's, let's start from the very beginning of episode 11. Ray has a secret plan that involves setting the house on fire. And he thinks that they're going to just allow him to set himself on fire as well so that he can distract mom and they can escape. But Norman had predicted this already, that Ray was going to do this. And was like, when Ray sets the fire, save him, but let him start the fire anyway. And then just escape with all of you. And the two-month time skip, which we didn't have any access to, where we didn't see anything happening at all, Emma just made this whole other plan, right? So episode one through nine, one through nine was about making the plan to escape. Episode 10 was about Norman dying. And episode 11, they escape with a completely different plan. Now, I don't know what that reminds you of, but there's this little thing called the mystery box where they tease something and they tease something. And at the end, when it actually happens, it fucking sucks. I'm not going to say this is mystery box levels of disappointing because we haven't seen the series finale yet. But if it has anywhere near the level of ass pulls that just happened in this episode, I don't know. This show was going very well pacing wise until, uh, until episode 9. Episode 9 and 10, I would say, were pretty slow. Episode 11 was also pretty slow. And I don't know what's going to happen in episode 12. I'm assuming they're saving most of their blowout crazy action budget for episode 12 because not much happened in this episode either a lot of repeated scenes and stuff i don't know what's gonna happen the fire animation was not great i don't know how i think it's cg i can't say for sure but it didn't look all that convincing the episode itself the music use was somewhat good but at the very beginning there was just all this like weird edgy imagery and they showed like ray's face for no reason also he provides this reasoning like I'm going to kill myself because I used all of you. And Emma's just like, no, you're not, you dumb bitch. Come with me. And he's like, okay. And he just goes with her for no reason. We don't really know why that's the case. Like, if he really had this urge to kill himself, and that was part of the motivation for why he had this plan in the first place, why didn't that come through to fruition at the end? Be like, hey, you can't just take me. I'm actually going to do this because I don't deserve to come with you guys. Or something like that. I don't know. Anything would have been better than fucking, I'm going to catch the match as you drop it using my superior physical and mental skills and just escape from here with you fucking pointlessly. Anything would have been better than that. Um, Don and Gilda, I knew were playing some kind of role in the background. I expected that to come back, but I didn't think there would be, I didn't think that would be the whole plan. I didn't think Don and Gilda and the kids were going to be like, this is the whole plan. It's just us. Ray and Norman and Emma and fuck, you did fucking nothing. You just sat and depressed under a tree for two months from what it looks like. She was just depressed under a tree for two months. Just telling other people to do shit. And they just did it. And that's the plan. So the whole plan was concocted in an episode where it was a five minute time skip. The entire episodes before that were almost entirely pointless. The only thing they found out of use was there's a tracking device in your ear. There's a wall. That's pretty much it. Everything else they're going to do from scratch now. Is that satisfying? Not to me. I find that kind of disappointing at the end. At least they escaped. Uh, it, I think it would have been more interesting if some like new factor came into play and they weren't able to escape. But maybe that's like teasing the audience too much. You have to actually show the escape since the whole show is about the escape in the first place. Episode 11. Relatively disappointing episode, I must say. Um, I don't know what's going to happen in the next episode. Um, they showed that little kid Phil right at the end. I knew he played some significant part in this. I don't know what's going to happen. Is he going to become like mama's new, like the starting point for her new house is just going to be this kid and he's going to be like her new Norman. I don't know. Or maybe he might be like her new Ray and he's like, he was on her side the whole time and she's going to send him out to spy on these other people. I don't know. They're heading towards headquarters right now. They're at the wall. I'm assuming they're going to run a, a run on the wall until they reach the bridge and then cross the bridge while the other people tend to the house. 
but mom wasn't able to radio them. So they're going to have to physically come down to the house to learn about what's happening. Will that give them enough time to catch them before they cross the bridge? I didn't see any babies. So I'm assuming they left the babies behind, which I'm surprised that Emma agreed to. She was pretty insistent on bringing the babies with her. So I don't know how they convinced her to do that. But since she made the plan by herself, she decided to leave the babies behind, which is completely out of character for her. And we weren't given any justification for why she did that. So I'm even more confused about that. And then there's the whole thing of Don and Gilda were mostly just side characters. They did like one significant thing, which is break into mom's room. And they kind of just get the whole glory of the escape because they did mostly everything while Emma and Ray pretended to be depressed. Well, Emma was pretending. Ray was actually depressed. No one really gives a fuck about that because, you know, whatever. It's just it's just Ray. He's always sad about something. He's the emo boy of the farm. What does it matter if he's depressed? And they just left him and let him be depressed without even telling him that there was a plan like this. So they just left him. What if he had killed himself before this particular night? What if he was like, I'm just so depressed two weeks into this, two months that I'm going to have to be depressed without knowing about anything, that I'm just going to kill myself now. <laughs> you, he had to try to kill himself at the right moment. Otherwise, this, pe- this plan wouldn't have worked, which is kind of creepy that they would even let him do that. That seems weirdly utilitarian for Emma to do. That seems like a Norman plan. And not something that Emma would go along with. Because she's really like the more ethical center of the trio. But apparently she just doesn't give a fuck anymore. And we're not really told why. Maybe Norman leaving was the onus for her moving towards like a more utilitarian, greater good type of mindset. But they never told us that. <laughs> Episode 10 just ended with her making a creepy face. I guess that's the 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 point at which she converts into like Norman 2. We're just supposed to know that. There's no like explanation there's no dialogue to explain why she's changed now nothing like that we just like cut from that straight to her having a whole plan ready i don't know about this episode this is a sketchy one uh at least charlotte's last episode was fucked up i think the last four episodes of this show are pretty mediocre at at best nine and ten were just extremely slow setting up norman's death eleven was pretty slow as well. They only really escaped towards the end. Most of it was just flashbacks and explaining shit to us that we didn't have explained to us while it's happening. This is like on the level of Ocean's Eleven, Matt Damon has a, or Ocean's Twelve rather, Matt Damon has a backpack on, or not Matt Damon, some dude has a backpack and that that has the real shit in it. This is on the level of that, except it's not done stylishly or as satisfyingly as George Clooney like gloating over the Night Fox. I don't know about this. I hope the series finale like really takes it to another level because otherwise this is going to be a disappointing ending to an otherwise great show. I'm kind of sad that this ended up turning out this way, to be honest. Um, But the show is still overall, I would still recommend it. I would just say just watch the first episode, eight episodes and skip to 12. It will make just the same amount of sense. Um So yeah, thanks for watching. That's week 11 of this. Uh, Next week, you know, probably another live reaction because I feel like there's going to be some emotional beats that we just need to hit with that. There's no better way to do that than watching it live. Um, Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.